Hello everyone and welcome aboard to my first video. I'm Captain James Flint and today we're going to talk about lasers and all the engineering options that you have available to customize them. I'd like to start by saying that the purpose of this video series is to provide an overview of all the various modifications and experimental effects found in Elite Dangerous and compile everything you might need to know about all of them in one central place. That being said, there is no right or wrong answer with your choices, but there could be a better or worse option, but that is solely dictated by your ship, your piloting ability, the activities you're doing, and you, no one else. Let's get to it. First off, let's cover the basics. Beam lasers have the highest power draw, distributor draw, damage, and thermal load of all three laser types, which makes them a great choice for stripping shields if your hardpoint numbers are limited. Pulse lasers are the opposite by having the lowest power draw, distributor draw, damage, and thermal load. They do, however, have an ever so slightly higher piercing value than beam lasers on all but the medium-sized hardpoints, curiously. And burst lasers are your happy medium between beam and pulse. They have less draw and heat than beams, but higher than pulses. Piercing is also on par with pulse lasers. One of the first choices commanders are drawn to when they begin engineering their lasers is the Efficient mod. Efficient has no negative drawbacks, so is a great all-around choice, especially when you're running multiple lasers on the same build or you're tied on power. It lowers power draw, distributor draw, and thermal load, all while increasing damage output. One of the only downsides to Efficient that isn't always apparent up front is that it retains the drastic damage falloff that plagues all lasers. Falloff begins at merely 0.6 kilometers, so even though you can connect with the target at up to 3 kilometers, you're only doing a small fraction of the damage that you could be doing at 0.6 kilometers or closer. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at other modifications you could use or what other hard points you could pair with lasers that are modded with Efficient. While not available on beam lasers, the Focus mod will increase range, extending out to 6 kilometers instead of 3, while slightly increasing damage falloff to begin at 1 kilometer. The huge boost in piercing values is one of its less appreciated features, which can bring even a medium laser to match the hardness values of the Mighty Type 10. Its only drawback is a tiny bump in thermal load. This is a great choice for those who prefer the longevity in conflict, as the piercing increase can allow your lasers to deal more damage to hull than you'd expect. Moving on to the lightweight mod. This one's pretty obvious what it's for and what it does, but it brings extra bonuses beyond just removing an enormous amount of mass. It also lowers power draw and distributor draw almost as much as the efficient mod does. But with reduced mass comes a reduction in integrity. So this is not advised for hull tanks or low shield ships. Also a great choice for speed focused combat ships and explorers who like to pack a little heat while out in the black, as the reduction in mass helps increase jump range. Long range lives up to its name by doubling maximum range up to 6 kilometers out. But its greatest attribute isn't just the extensive range, but the removal of damage fall off entirely. Normally, falloff begins at merely 0.6 kilometers, meaning that you're barely even tickling the target when they're 2.5 kilometers away. But with the long range, its zero falloff policy means you'll be dealing maximum damage at every range. There is a slight increase in power draw and a bit of added weight that comes with the enhancement. This is a great choice all around for most loadouts and is great for bounty hunting and bigger, slower ships that struggle to keep up with their targets. If you're looking for massive firepower against shields, consequences be damned, you're looking for overcharged. Bringing with its massive increase in damage is a hefty power draw and thermal load increase. This is another mod that's good for single laser hardpoints, but less advised on multiple laser loadouts. Short range is great for brawlers. Those that like to dogfight, stay up close and personal, and ships that can maneuver quickly to get into the action and hold that dominant position. Damage is actually increased even higher than the overcharge mod, albeit just slightly, but brings much higher thermal load penalty and slashes your range in half, down from 3 kilometers to 1.5. This is not for the faint of heart, and recommended for experienced combat pilots. Another mod that's not available on beam lasers is the Rapid Fire mod. 
This goes well on ships that can maintain a close proximity to their target due to the jitter that's introduced. We'll come back to that in a moment. While this mod lowers damage per shot, it lowers distributor draw quite a bit and increases fire rate substantially. And this rate of fire increase brings your damage per second way up. It really shines the brightest on pulse lasers, as a rapid-fire pulse laser can deal more damage than an efficient beam laser on the same size class. Its biggest drawback that some commanders underestimate is the 0.5 degrees of jitter that's introduced. Now, jitter is not the wobble that you see on gimbaled and turret hardpoints. While the reticle wobbles around slightly, shots still land at the pinpoint of the reticle. Jitter is different by causing the hardpoint to fire in a random arc up to the degree indicated by the mod or effect from the center point of the reticle. While 0.5 degrees of jitter doesn't sound like much, it can make a substantial difference at range, especially against smaller targets. This is excellent on small and medium ships that have power constraints but are nimble enough to keep a bit closer to their target. And finally, we come to the sturdy modification. It's the opposite of lightweight. While it doubles the mass, it drastically increases integrity. It also adds a solid buff to its piercing value, as well as a thermal load reduction. This is an excellent, almost required choice for hull tanks. That's it for episode one. Thank you very much for checking out the channel. Be on the lookout for episode two, which will be coming in the near future. If you found anything in this video helpful or have questions on the subjects covered, feel free to comment below and let me know or find me on Twitter at FlintlockENG. Until next time, I'm Captain Flint.